Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Commander Clash podcast, where the Commander Clash crew discusses commander-related topics. And today, we are going to be bringing out our hottest of hot takes. Yes, we're going to be bringing our controversial opinions. Opinions that will make people very, uh, rustle a lot of jimmies, I believe is the term in the Americas. Uh, it will wrestle a lot of jimmies, and it will hopefully uh, get some constructive and engaging conversations out of the rest of the group. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to bring our hot takes that we genuinely believe in and, and see see where that good discussion leads and see if we learn anything in the process. Um, and joining me, as always, for this hot take debate is the Asian Avenger, also known as Krim. How's it going, Krim? Yo, what's up, Tomer? How you doing? Doing well, doing well. Um, I'm looking at the list that we got. Uh, I see some some hot takes here, and I, I like it. I like it. I'm, I'm on board with some of what you're saying here. <laughs> so, some of it, right? So not some all of it. of it. Okay. No. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> all right. Uh, next up, we got Seth, probably better known as Saffron Olive, or Seth. How's it going, Seth? I'm doing well, Tomer. How are you today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I always love hot takes. Um, uh, me, me too. I got, I got some hot ones. I think we'll see. Yeah, <laughs> and and someone who brings the hot takes regularly, I would say, to uh, the podcast is uh, Richard, also known as the Goldfish Father. <laughs> Apparently, we whiffed on on figuring out the name <laughs> last fish week. Fish Father. I thought it was the, the fish, fish Father. Father. Yeah, that was a good one. But then, like, the comment section was like, "Oh, you missed the goldfish part." And I'm like, well. <laughs> All right, uh, Richard. How's it going, Richard? Call me, call me Mr. G. All right. Uh, I got the hottest of hot takes, and if you don't agree with me, I'm gonna take you out back, my little friend. Okay? Yeah. You'll be sleeping yeah. with the fishes. Yeah. <laughs> You'll be sleeping with the scoops plushie on, on the on the couch. Actually, um, speaking of plushies, though, you can't buy that plushie. Sorry. Uh, even if you ask, we don't have those. But what you can do is you can buy all those beautiful play mats stapled on Richard's wall if you're watching this on YouTube. If you're on, if you're listening to this on the podcast or whatever, uh, just imagine that on Richard's wall, he has these beautiful rubber play mats. And if you want to see them in, in, in person and whatnot, you can head on over to mtggoldfishmerch.com and you can purchase those play mats. Uh, you can also purchase deck boxes, deck sleeve tokens, and also clothing uh, apparel like t-shirts and, and so much more over at mtgoldfishmerch.com and another way you can support the channel uh, is you can like and subscribe on wherever you're listening to this podcast so if you're listening to it on Spotify like over there if you're listening to this on YouTube like and subscribe and hit the dingle dangle maybe um, and that helps the channel as well all right uh, let's 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 jump into it uh, Seth, take it away what's the first hot take you've got here so I wasn't exactly sure how to phrase this one, but I went with the color identity rule in Commander is kind of BS. Uh, essentially, like, ha. Huh. So this goes back to hybrid mana in specific, which is something that I've been harping on for a long time. I think that the color identity rule is just wrong when it comes to hybrid mana. The intention of hybrid mana is that a card like Kitchen Finks is mono green and mono white, and that's reflected in its hybrid Selesnia mana cost. But in Commander, Kitchen Finks is a Selesnia card, so you can't play it in mono white, you can't play it in mono green, but it even goes kind of bigger than that. I feel like... <sighs> Commander is just way too conservative. People are way too hesitant to change and try new things. When you think about this format, it was created by like a few years ago by you know, just some random people playing the game. And for some reason, we can't change anything. Like it's so, so difficult. Whenever you bring up a conversation about something like color identity, people hold it as sacrosanct and you can't like even suggest that, oh, maybe this isn't the perfectly optimal way that this rule could be constructed because everyone gets their pitchforks and is like, ah, we've always done it this way. We can't change anything. And it drives me absolutely insane. So uh, I think the color identity rule is BS and we should be more open to the possibility that maybe we didn't hit a home run with all the commander rules the first time around and maybe there's tweaks that could actually make commander even better not that the format's bad but maybe there's things we could do that could make it even a better format and we even have examples of this the color identity rule was changed because originally if you added mana outside your color identity you added colorless mana and then they changed that rule so you could add mana that was outside your colors and that made the format better so we even have some examples in the not super distant past of how being open to changing things like this can actually improve the format so that's my rant. Hybrid mana. Make it work right. <laughs> Color identity BS. 
<laughs> I don't know what y'all did. Think, Mark but... <laughs> Rosewater talk to you. I know he's like super against. Uh, oh, he's he's super on board for hybrid colors to count yeah, as part me, of the color me and Mark, identity. We do agree. We do agree on this one. <laughs> what card do we care about such that we care about this? <laughs> like, is there an actual card we want to be playing that is not okay, allowed? So there's, Ash- there's, Ash- there's, Ash- there's Ash- many. Yuck. There's many examples, but maybe one of the best ones is the commander that you just played on last week's Commander Clash in Rigo from Streets of New Capenna. That's an awesome mono-white card. Like, that's a card that's screaming to be put in white weenie decks. And technically, it's a mono-white card, according to how Wizards designs a hybrid mana. But in Commander, you gotta be Bant or four colors or five colors to actually put it in your deck because of how the color identity rule is worded. I mean, unless you just make it your Commander, right? Yeah, and then you can just build a mono white deck around it. Yeah, because like I've seen people do that with a Loro. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean you can work around it, and of course there's like you can rule zero it or whatever. But I really hate that <laughs> that rule argument because that doesn't really work for you know pickup games and all that kind of stuff. It's it's complicated. So right. I'm I'm not like I'm not super hardline against uh, changing the color identity rules. But I don't have a I, I don't find the argument to change it very convincing. Like I like the fact that Commander has this quirk because I like the idea of restriction breeding creativity. And I feel like opening up just hybrid cards to your monocolor decks or your dual color decks or whatever that generally couldn't fit there before, all it does is it kind of like homogenizes lists even further. Like, you're not just going to be jamming random hybrid cards. I'm sure there's going to be, like, one comment section typing, tip-tapping away right now. Like, actually, I just like playing bad cards. Uh, you're wrong. But, like, generally speaking, you know, uh, people are going to be like, well, I'm going to put the best hybrid card that fits better than the current options available to me. And then you just kind of homogenize those lists that way. And I just I think it's just like a nice quirk of the format that I don't see really a gain in changing it. So I wouldn't be so, super against it. I wouldn't be sad if it changed, but I also do not care for it to change. I think we should listen tomorrow on this. Okay, there are a lot of things that people hold them up there as like, you know, the all creator of magic, but like what does hybrid mana mean, right? And if it means this card can be white or this card can be blue. You should be able to put in your mono blue deck or your mono white, right? Like, if that's what that really means, I think it's fair, right? Like, it, it's the card is not both colors simultaneously, or is it? I don't know. But if Morrow says it should be allowed, then I think it should be allowed. Because he designed, you know, what that mana symbol means, and I think it should be allowed into the format. And I think it doesn't even matter. Like, no, nothing's going to change when this happens, right? Other than people get confused. Like, the metagame's not going to shift. They're not going to design cards differently, right? But intuitively, if, in a 60-card format, if I play a mono-white deck and I can play Kitchen Finks, right? I have no mana that generates green or no lands that generate green mana. Why can't I do it in Commander, right? So intuitively, it makes sense. So I think they should change it. On the other hand, though, I'm looking at some. So I'm looking at hybrid cards that do see play in EDH rec. And the topmost one, according to EDH rec, is Deathrite Shaman. Deathrite Shaman taps to add a color if it removes a land from a graveyard. I feel like that's kind of weird in a mono black deck. I don't feel like that is a mono black card. It feels very much like a Golgari it's, card. Deathrite has activated De- abilities that have different mana costs, though, so it would yes. right. it would oh, fall yeah, under right, this. right. So then we and then Ashiok, I guess. Yeah, yeah like an Ashiok would. But Ashiok doesn't. Ashiok doesn't really do like Mono Blue doesn't do graveyard hate like that, right? Like that's very much a black ability. But it also shuts off. Well, I mean, it'd be nice to have access to that though. It's kind of got the, true. the mind lock nice. orb. Mind lock orb is a blue card. So the not searching the library yes. part, I think, is very very blue. Yeah, and and the exiling of graveyards is very black. It feels like a Demir card to me, honestly. Yeah, it, maybe they <sighs> it's kind of colorless Ashok. though, maybe isn't Ashok it? Should be Demir. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, Tormod's grip. Like lots of colorless cards can exile the graveyard, so maybe. Also, maybe Mark Rosewater fine. has went on record why he finds hybrid very annoying in Commander. It's because of his design requirements. He has to design more cards for Commander in non-Commander sets. And one way that he wants to use hybrid is is just, you know, to smooth out 
one versus one constructed and limited and he's being told actually these don't work well in commander so change it and so he's he's coming at it from a design <laughs> gripe not a oh i just want what's best for commander so i don't really like i i, I respect his opinion obviously he's much smarter than me and he, he knows how to design better than me but also I, he does have I, other ulterior motives here i have never really heard a convincing argument of why making hybrid mana work the way mark rosewater intends it would be a bad thing for the format whenever this conversation comes up people are like oh well maybe you'll be able to pyroblast something in my mono white deck i'm like that happens now we have tons of cards that make (laughs) off-color tokens and like you're stealing your opponent's stuff like that's your sticking point that maybe the pyroblast is going to hit something off your wrong color deck like i've never like what is a reasonable argument against this i'm the best that i've heard is maybe it's like confusing yeah but restrictions right you can't give blue graveyard hate like that like so ashok i think is i was thinking like kitchen things right you're like look the ability could be green the ability could be white it's either or fine right but Blue does not get graveyard hate. So why is Ashiok hybrid, right? Ashiok should be Demir. So I feel Wizards has botched their use of hybrid mana, right? So I tend to agree with Tober now. Like, I don't want Blue getting, you know, just random graveyard hate because it's on this hybrid card that hybrids with black. But like, isn't that graveyard hate a colorless? colorless? Not, isn't right? graveyard hate Wait, colorless, though? I don't. I feel like Graveyard is a bad list, example yeah. because <laughs> there's like, always a colorless card that does everything. Though, <laughs> why are we applying the color pie in 2022? <laughs> like the color pie well, doesn't matter. Colors. Why don't we just have lands? Uh, honestly, like it. Uh, do color pie? Like, does the color pie even matter anymore? I mean, because green does all the things that blue yeah. does. So I mean, why, why not? Their own color pie all the green time. doesn't do right. all the things that well blue doesn't do all the things that green does. Where's my where's my Llanowar elf that's blue? They're they're adding it. You better believe in 2023. Like you're <laughs> like mono white can't draw cards. Why does it need to draw cards? I don't know, but now we can draw yeah. cards, right? Because people want to play mono color decks, and Wizards needs to enable that, so they need to give you a substitute. So in that sense, I agree with Krim. Color pie doesn't actually matter <laughs> anymore, but. And that would be that would be interesting in like saying if if Mark well the problem was I I feel like the problem w- really was that Mark Rosewater back in the day or like two years if we if we re- fast uh, not fast forward the opposite of it rewind that's a word uh, if you rewind two years ago Mark Rosewater was like hard no to white card draw the way I want to fix it is with hybrid cards so we can make a blue white hybrid card that says draw cards and that would be fine and then you mono white players can play that but we can't have mono white drawing cards just on a white card so this is a way to fix it but they've already changed that right like we've already seen so much good card draw i just don't see i just don't see that fix anything i'm so confused why why does marvel think that fixes anything like if i play a, a mono white deck in standard i can use the hybrid card yeah so effectively if a mono white has card draw so how does hybrid mana fix it i don't understand maro's argument no as in like we didn't have like white wasn't allowed to have card draw back in the day like mentor of the meek was a color pie break yeah, yeah, yeah. he said but now that shifted like he already said that he's or the, the design philosophy shifted and we see that in, in cards that white draws cards i just don't see i just don't see the point of the little white i like the restriction of it honestly i like, I like the restriction it's a, too. It's a work work but it's also like why why is commander 99 card singleton like it is why is it 21 commander damage because it is and it's cute and it works but, and it's uh, like but does that we mean we want to change it does that mean it's it's the best like just because it exists it seems like a very conservative argument to me to just be like yeah. oh it's the way we've are always done it so it must be the best way like that's the yeah. very conservative line of thinking when I, my thinking is there's probably a better way to be doing it. Why aren't we open to investigating these things that could potentially improve the format? Why are we so afraid? And why why is 21 the right amount of commander damage? Why is 40 the right starting life total? Why is hybrid excluded? And I think those are questions that are worth asking rather than immediately whenever you bring up a topic like that, people just shouting it down because, oh, that's always how we've done it. That's always how we've done it. And maybe the way we've always done it is not actually the optimal way to be doing it. Like, that, that is a realistic possibility. But there I could be a that. better... I mean, I just, I no one cares that. about hybrid cards. <laughs> I, like, except that's, me. That's, we all agree, except effectively, me. there'd be no difference if we unbanned them, right? So, like, therefore, we don't put too much thought into it. But, like, if you... 
if you made Dockside a hybrid card, you better believe there'd be a huge debate on whether this thing, you know, if Ristic Study was a hybrid card, people would be up in arms, like, you know, figuring out whether hybrid right. should be allowed. But as is, we're like, I don't know, whatever, who cares? And it's easier to stick with the norm than it is to try to yeah. fix everything when you have no motivation to do so. Yeah, like that, that's, that's, that's probably the main thing, right? Like, I'm not th- I'm not imagining where, like, if they, they change the rules on it and all of a sudden, like, Kitchen Finks becomes the number one played card, right? <laughs> uh, like, like or, or, or like Ashiok. So, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe that's why it's so, it hasn't happened yet. But, it, like, in, like, in the case, like, in the context of the argument, I, I agree with Seth in that they could totally just unban it, and only because I think that it doesn't do anything. Like as of right now, it it does. It's like why why is it stuck to just like you know the hybrid stuff? Just let the mono color decks do it. Uh, the p- color pie doesn't matter anymore. So why not just let mono blue get the graveyard hate? Uh, why like I I'm just I I'm all for it. Just making it so that mono color decks can play these hybrid colored cards. It just because it doesn't really do anything. I really doesn't. I, I just genuinely don't think it does much. I feel like Krim has upstaged my hot take with his, the color pie is dead. <laughs> wait your turn, Krim. Wait your turn. It's wait, 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 wait. <laughs> is that a hot take? Uh, I don't know. Maybe maybe that's not hot. Maybe, maybe that's true. I mean, <sighs> I agree with Seth, though. Like, you, you bring a good point. That we, should, we should be able to, you know, re, reevaluate fundamentals of a, of a format and see if it's better. I personally still think restriction breed, breed, breeds creativity. Like, I think that's part of the fun. And then if you just add hybrid cards. Right now, the, the, the hybrid cards that we have available, like the topmost cards, Deathrite Shaman, which doesn't work in this situation. So Ashiok, Sahili, Sublime Artificer, uh, Vexing Sushir, Cold-Eyed Selkie. Like, these cards, like, these are not, like, all-stars in the format already. So it's so, like, it wouldn't change much. It would be more yeah. like future-proofing. So there's right. there's there would be little harm currently I think with yeah. with having that happen. <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I would like to see I I while it is true that restriction breeds creativity, at the same time too much restriction stifles creativity. Like look at tiny leaders. You had too much of a restriction where you could only play stuff that cost 3 mana or less and the format got solved and the format died because of the restrictions they put on the format. So there's there's a balancing act there. Like yes to some extent Restriction is a positive, so but then it goes too far, and then you just kill it. We're not dying for carpool. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's not a carpool issue, right? It's Seth's a dirty cheater trying to get effects into his color. <laughs> that don't belong there. He's like, I, I, I need the black counter spell. You know, yes, I need the, the blue hard board wipe, but it's hybrid Azorius. It's fine, <laughs> yeah, right? Like, exactly. I think exactly. that's a problem. <laughs> but if you want Kitchen Finks, go for it, right? It'll, yeah, it's... It's really like I don't. I if they change it tomorrow, I would not care. But I think I would care more if the card pool was a little bit different and we had cards that were like clearly not in the right color, and now you could play them in that color. And also, are they clearly better than options in the other colors? And now you just replace. You know, you had options on like, oh well, this one's slightly better in this situation, and this one's better if I'm in such and such theme. But if you start getting hybrid cards that are just strictly better, and you just slot them in over these these options then i start liking a lot less but yeah right now it's like that's a risk i could i could see that being a risk i don't think the current hybrid pool really would be a problem like that but there could be a hybrid card in the future where where something like that could happen which makes sense yeah Eh. it's fine (laughs) the color pool doesn't matter i want to i'm trying to get rampant blue yeah (laughs) hybrid civic card Uh, honestly all the lists Wow, okay. So, Krim, you, you clearly have some hot takes. I want to hear your first one. Uh, okay, so I think my first thing that I I've, uh, I probably wanted to talk about is that I think board wipes are good in aggro decks. I, I, I genuinely believe that board wipes are very good in aggro decks. Uh, if, if it were 1v1 format, I can understand why you don't want to slow yourself down too much. But oftentimes in Commander, there are so many creatures and so many things that get bigger and unruly and kind of like just get super OP quick, right? So with that in mind, even a deck like uh, like my Humans deck or a Merfolk deck or, or I guess like 
it's not as bad in Merfolk because you're just bouncing everything. But like, it, it, I'm thinking more like it, any any white base deck or a black base deck, I would still play a hard sweeper. I would still play Damnation. I would still play Decree of Pain. I would still play Wrath of God. And we already know I put onto Inversion anything that has white mana. Uh, so so like uh, the thing is, I, I I think that there is this uh, misconception because like it's taken from like 60 card formats where you don't need board wipes, right? But in a 100 card format in a multiplayer game, I think they're 100% warranted. I would agree with that. I mean, I think... I don't think I would want to play a lot of board wipes in an aggro deck. I think I would play more in a in a crim deck than I would in a aggro deck. But I think having zero board wipes is probably incorrect in an aggro deck. I think it was last season. Richard uh, laughed and chuckled because my <laughs> humans deck, my general Kudro deck, had al- al- almost as many board wipes as a control <laughs> deck. It was only like. Like three shy or something of a control deck, but like it, it was hilarious. How many board wipes do you use yeah, to run the control deck? Like, only how many three shy you play over there, Grim. <laughs> yeah, I, I run like three total. I, I play like eleven, probably. Like oh my, my god! <laughs> like right. it is one tenth of board my deck. And aggro might be a little spicy. <laughs> I have a general sense of it. Oh dude. no, dude! My my humans deck is ready. You know, like hey. Sometimes- <laughs> For what? What is it? Uh, Thanos is arguing for the greater good, right? You just gotta, you, you gotta sack a few humans. To, to you get had me on it. board until then. <laughs> well, I, I I would rather have nobody on board. You know what I'm saying? That, that's, <laughs> but like, that's why I want to clear the board all the time, though, because in in this format, it's very easy for you to fall behind against three players if you're playing aggro, right? So I I think it it, it seems like a meme, but. Uh, the good news, though, is that Wizards has now gone, done a good job of making board wipes better. Like, example, uh, at least for creature decks, like, you're seeing how there's the destroy, the improvised destroy all non-artifact creatures, right? Uh, you're seeing now, like, even the Meatball Massacre. That works well in an aggro deck because it can be used as a sweeper or just a, a, a blood artist effect, right? And then, uh, yeah, like, and so on and so forth, right? You're seeing more things like it. Just like how, you know, a while back we saw, like, whatever, citywide assault destroy all creatures with power for or greater, right? So it, it made it so that it was friendly towards creatures. And I think now there are enough sweepers in the format that are friendly to your creature deck and, and detrimental to your opponents. So uh, I, I think you should be – people should be running more. Like, I, if, if my bar is that a control deck should play about 10 board wipes, a tenth of your deck, I think an aggro deck is, like, five or four. Look, I, I agree with Krim. I agree. Five seems right. And Krim was working super hard. All your staple board wipes work in aggro, right? Farewell, austere oh, command, yeah. cleansing Nova. Like, you can choose the mode such that you don't get wrecked as hard. And the other thing is, since you're an aggro deck, you are ready to get board wiped, right? So it is in your favor to heroic intervention board wipe the board. Right, like you're ready for this, right? You could also just sandbag your creatures, let everyone play their creatures, wipe the board, and then deploy. So, I agree with Krim. Five, five is probably right, right? Because onto inversion in there, farewell, uh, austere command, dust dawn. I love as well. Uh, so that is not too egregious. I don't know about like eight, nine, because then like you don't have any slots <laughs> for creatures, right? Uh, like where are your creatures? You cut lands. Is it an aggro deck still? <laughs> right? Yeah, but you cut lands. It's, it's draw and go aggro. I think aggro for Draw is like he has aggro. a creature on the battlefield, <laughs> yeah. you know, and it attacks sometimes. One Delver of Secrets, 20 board wipes. <laughs> there's, there's a notion thief alongside the opposition yeah, agent. Yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, may, yeah. that shifts it from control to aggro, I think, yeah. <laughs> and if those creatures die, you have Nefalia Drown Yard as a backup win condition. <laughs> of, of I'm thinking of that well, SpongeBob yes, theme. Awakening to bring <laughs> yeah, it back. <laughs> yeah, I do. I do. And like Richard is right though. Like you could even go above five, by the way. Like I I, I wouldn't okay. be like I wouldn't like laugh at the idea that you, you have like, oh well you have over five board wipes, that's kinda weird. But but like Richard had mentioned heroic intervention and, and anything that's white based nowadays, you almost there's like tons of things like flawless maneuver, so you can easily just get around it. You know, Boros Charm is another thing. So you can get around your own sweepers, unless it's farewell. Then, you know, well farewell is uh, farewell is absolute. Right yeah, now that is right. You have to fairies pro that. You can still yeah. do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's true. That's <laughs> true. Give it give it a, many give it a year. How give many rests do you play, Tomer? I'm very curious. Cause I, I think my typical deck maybe has like three and that's like my control decks, maybe four, but I uh, I do not play that many compared to Richard and Krim, I don't think. 
I, I, I agree with, with Krim and Richard, and I think I should be running more, honestly. So I can tell you in my aggro deck, I have a Changeling Tribal deck, or Tribal Tribal deck, um, and it runs uh, three board wipes. And every single time I play it, I feel like I should bump the number up higher. Because I think I think a lot of people are like, they, they see board wipes in creature heavy decks, and they're like, well, I don't want to blow up my thing, therefore board wipes are bad. I'll just have target removal or something. But like you have to realize in like an average game, um, you're not always going to have a board full of creatures. You're going to be playing from behind a lot of the time because it's you're up against four people. There's going to be most often of the time, there's going to be somebody who's more head than you are. And so if you don't have a board presence, even if you're in a creature deck, which is going to happen pretty often, um, either you just got board wiped or you just haven't deployed as quickly as your opponents. Um, they hit like their saw ring starts and everything like that. It's going to be really beneficial to you if you just wipe the board and then deploy your team or like like use floss maneuver and stuff to protect your board and then wipe the board. Um, so I think like people are playing for like these ideal scenarios where yes, my 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 deck goes off and then I have a lot of creatures. Therefore, why would I want to wipe the board? But like that's the best case scenario. That's when you're winning the game. You need board wipes to reset the game. So when so when you're not in a winning position, you can reset the board and then get into that winning position. So I do feel like board wipes are super underrated. And also, I think modern board wipe design uh, is pushing towards asymmetrical wipes. So we had, like Krim said, the the one that destroys all non-artifact creatures. There's one for non-white creatures. Uh, there's Dust of Dawn and like Fell the Mighty and stuff, where it's like creatures power X or higher. So if you have go wide things, there's there's uh, uh, there's one that destroys non-token creatures. So if you're in a token deck, you're you're saving your board. So there's a lot of ways these days to not touch your board state while while putting your, yourself behind. So. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Man, maybe I should play a few more too. Yes. Yes, good. We're all on Actually, board, Krim. I, you got I us. Just, I just trust that Crim's got me. <laughs> I know Crim's got like fifteen, <laughs> yeah. so I'm like, I can cut that wrath. Crim's got. Crim's, Crim's got not me. here this, this this season though. Yeah. We've been we've been lacking the Crim player. There's there's been, yeah. there's been things going on <laughs> on the board. I I tried to fill the Crim role, but I failed. I expropriated, and I was like, Crim will like this, and then it didn't work, and then I still died. Why, Krim? Tell me, please. It appropriates a, a miserable card. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong uh, with it? It's too much it's for Krim, Tober. You, you yeah. went over the line. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, there's a line, right? It's like appropriate. All I wanted to do was copy it a couple times. Oh, oh my God. God. <laughs> That's miserable. <laughs> <laughs> it's lovely. Um, all right. So you won us over, Krim, with that one. Uh, Richard, can you win us with your hot take? All right. People play too much spot creature removal. Swords to plowshares is trash. Oh my god! Wow, this oh my is god. hot take. 20. So, swords to plowshares to me is boomer magic. Okay, this is like oh peak, my god, like 20, 2012 commander. Okay, you have a swords to plowshares in your hand, right? What if your opponent kills you with an artifact, an enchantment, with anything that's not a creature? You're dead. Okay, they play a creature. Chances are it's ETB killed you, right? <laughs> <laughs> they played a creature. You're like, so scary. You remove it. Their next opponent plays a creature. Every creature in Commander in 2022 is must remove. What are you doing with Swords to Plowshares, right? So I think you should not play Swords to Plowshares. You should play generic removal. And to Krim's point, board wipes. Every creature is must remove in 2022. So your one Swords to Plowshares does nothing, right? And... You know, if you're getting attacked by a creator hoof, you're dying anyway, right? You're, if you're getting attacked by creatures, that one sword is not going to save you, right? So play a fog, play to fairies protection, play a generous gift, play literally anything over swords because everything kills you. You can't swords everything in the game. Mm. Play farewell, <laughs> right? Like that. That's it. But it's so efficient. I can't like, be. It, I can't be more against what Richard just said. <laughs> You, I can't you, be more. What are you going to move? It. You're like, Esper Sentinel hits the battlefield, followed by a dock side, followed by an opposition <laughs> agent. What are you doing with your swords? And then Crater Hoof kills you. You're like, okay, I have a swords. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> but like, okay, think about all the things that get rewarded for them dying, right? You can get rid of like Arena Rector. You can get, oh, I, I guess Protean Hulk isn't a thing, but like, uh, like, yeah, like all of those cards. It just, for one mana, I think like if you're going to play spot removal, it is the first spell you put in. 
right? And then uh, you, we could talk about like maybe like the utter ends and then all that stuff afterwards, or maybe march or like so, like like path, right? Like yeah, sure, we can cut those. Can be like maybe the the, the spells you'd want to cut, but like if you're gonna play a spot removal in white, I think swords has to be the first spell you put in for a spot removal spell. I agree with you with the if part. You just don't go down that if path. You just don't play spot removal. It's it's, it's so what? So 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 spot removal as a whole is doo doo. It doesn't say to you everything. ETBs dies, leaves the battlefield, does something. No, there's boots. Okay, Uh, if you're up against combo decks, sorry, go ahead, Seth. I think Richard's right. Honestly, like oh my god. Okay, okay, so. So I think he's went a little too far in saying that Swords is trash. I still play Swords on occasion. But honestly, I really don't want removal that only kills creatures. Like, I'll play a Generous Gift. I'll play a Beast Within. Stuff like that. I'll play an Assassin's Trophy. But stuff that only kills a single creature, I think is kind of trash in 2022, Commander. Like... I think that I, I think that in a broad sense, Richard is right. Maybe you can argue that Swords is just so efficient it should get grandfathered in or something. You should still play it as your like one exception to the rule. But really, I don't know. Do you play Doom Blades and Terminates? Like those cards are, I think, actively no, no, no. bad. Like those, those are, are just not, actively bad. Those are not the same though. It's one more bad. The Rakdos, it's one though, more, right? Like you can't get yeah. more efficient. You can't get it's Swords so, in those colors. Right? I, I, I was, would, I would uh, just play Deadly Rollick or Baleful Mastery yeah. over, over those cards in in those colors, oh, right? So, path so like, to Exile. It, path to Exile is is the truth because it exiles. It's cheap. It's efficient. Like, come on. Now, no, okay. So Rock by by. Position. By by that by that standard, then would you say then that March of Otherworldly Light is probably better than uh, wow. as opposed to Swords? That's what so expensive, that? though. It's so the it, axe it, is very very costly. I think like Utter End or Anguish Unmaking, like those cards, maybe not Utter End anymore because it keeps getting outclassed. But those like Exile anything, those cards I'm or Void Void Rend, the new one from Streets of New Capenna, a card like that. Totally on board with something that can blow up an artifact or a creature or an enchantment, but just hitting creatures, nah, not not gonna do it. There's too many different things that can kill you in Commander, so, like Richard said. It's so meta dependent, but I wouldn't even say. Actually, no, I take that back. Like, there's so many. Yeah, there's so many. Like, if you're nine, like nine times out of ten, if I'm sitting at an average play group, just people that I don't know, and they show their commanders, I assume their most important card in their deck is their commander. And if their commander's on the board, they're going to generate a ton of value. And it's usually in my best interest, if I see them about to pop off, to remove that commander. The difference between a generous gift and a source of plowshares, and I will run generous gift in every white deck. I think it's an amazing piece of spot removal but i'm still gonna run source of plowshares because sometimes i just won't have three mana open and if somebody plays a a combo or something that is going to generate a ton of value on the same turn and doesn't give me a turn to cast my sorcery speed farewell or whatever i still got to remove it or else i'm going to lose the game so yeah source of plowshares does it because nine times out of ten i i I can be able to hold a one white the difference between holding one white mana up and three mana up is like huge especially if you're not a draw go deck like if you're just a tap out deck you can maybe hold up one white mana but you can't hold up three very easily or else you're going to set yourself two back so like there's there has to there must answer stuff that you have to deal with at instant speed and for one white mana and it exiles so you can't recur it or whatever, or not, none of that nonsense. You just you gotta have that, or else you just but you're we'll just randomly if, lose. You're already losing if you just like randomly kill value commanders on the table. You went down a card. Your two other opponents are up a card, right? Like what you want to do is not die. Like you know, like if they combo off against you, you need to not die, right? And I feel Swords doesn't do that. That's why I'd rather take a fog, right? Like, if you attack me, I'm good. You attack my opponents, good for you, right? Well, like, if you ETB, I'd rather take a counterspell, right? Just counter it if you think they're going to kill you, right? Or a stifle or something. Like, you know, you're holding swords against a crater hoof. You're dying anyway, right? And you got to play not. the game, right? If I let you resolve that, you know, will you hit me? Because I need to, like, sword something in response. Like, it, it's just not the answer it was from, like, five years. And five years ago, it was, like, the bomb. We were attacking with battle cruiser creatures. You know, you would actually accomplish something by swordsing something. But like, 
You swords one commander, the other two like must kill commanders enter the battlefield, you die. <laughs> right? Like how does this help you? Yeah, but what if what if there's a one commander that's must kill but you know gets a high a fast start? Like, you know, you see a Hanada player at the table and the Hanada player then, then has, you, you know, the soul you, you, ring, you, has you, the you hope someone else no, then you have their the swords. removal. Mm-hmm. Right? You got the swords on them. Like that's the whole uh, point of swords. You, I, you need I, it, I, I think, or else you just die. I think the only Richard use for swords is removing like a thali or something that's actively killing you. Like you know, if they have a creature that's preventing you from winning, you must remove it. Right? But you can use a generous gift. But if you're just doing a value removal, like you're losing. Like you, you just set you and your opponent you remove the gains back, and then everyone else is winning. And, like, it doesn't even work half the time. That's the thing, right? If it was a guaranteed stuff them, great, right? But it doesn't work half the time. What if it's an artifact they're comboing off with, right? Or what if their commander just needs the ETB, right? Or you they run can both swords do it in response to your swords, right? Like, there's so many ways to get around it. You have to run but, both. But you only have so much room now. There's so many staples now. Like, what do you... Yeah, there, there's a pinch. And that's why I think the value is on the flexibility. Like... I'm not. I'm not saying run like ten spot removal, but I'm gonna run the very best spot removal there is. And but swords, and swords might and not be it anymore. Right there. Like is, is, is no swords way. is swords it anymore? It, it, I, maybe the value of killing non creatures is too high. If you look at the most played creatures in Commander in discount mana dorks, which are kind of their own thing, like Eternal Witness, Dockside Extortionist, Sun Titan, Baleful Strike, Solemn Simulacrum, Avengers on the Guard. Like this is the EDH reckless. Like. Is swords good against any of those? Are you going to swords a baleful strix and like feel happy about it? Or even a sun titan has got its value. A solemn has gotten its value. Like, is that even? Ugh, I don't no, know. It doesn't but seem but like it everybody up. has a must kill commander. Then I need a sword to plowshares. Then you to need a sure farewell. Need... <laughs> right. You then, need to kill what three if commanders get, at once. <laughs> what if what if you cast your commander and then he pops off on the same turn? And you don't have the chance to cast farewell. Like it's a fairy's you protection need to, have... to let the three commanders pop off against themselves. <laughs> but like you remove the first one, then the second one kills you. Right? Like it's not enough. Right? I'd rather have like a propaganda and hope you some. can't attack me through it, right? Or you know what I mean? Oh, oh propaganda! People laugh at propaganda. It's like, haha! I didn't intend on attacking anyway. Good job preventing that. I'm going to drain you for infinite life. Whereas the uh, source of plowshares can protect against an attacker, and <laughs> it can deal with combos. It's, it's too good for me. That's crazy. <laughs> I, I, I'm with crazy Tom, magic. I, I think I think Tomer is right here. I, I I'm fully in the camp that swords is still good. And, and so they they need a swords with split second exile all abilities on the stack, and then I could buy oh. it. Right? Like it, it 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 kills all ETBs and cannot be interacted with. And then I'm like, okay, this does something now. Isn't there Maybe. a split second stifle? You want that? Mm-hmm. They, there is. Shove. Yeah, there is. But that's Trudeau. too narrow. But I think Twin resolve is not. pretty playable. So 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 you're saying again like just any any creature removal that doesn't hit uh, things outside of creatures for spot removal isn't worth it. No, no. wait. Like yeah. it, it it has creature to only, I'd rather I'd yeah. rather play more generic cards, right? And I'd rather yeah. play other cards to keep me alive. Like I'd rather play an Angel's Grace and hope I survive the combat to get to my turn to come back to kill you, <laughs> right? Like so many times the swords will not answer anything, right? And what, what happens is you play a game where you're just holding swords in hand. And you're like, is that, is that you know, worth killing? No. Is that worth killing? No. And you're like, you're not actually playing your game plan because you have like three removal spells in hand. And like, that was your game. And you're like, I didn't do anything my deck wanted to do, right? Wait, but then so, you hold an angel's grace in your hand instead of a source of plashes and you think you're going to get more value out of that? Well, I mean, if I die it, this turn, maybe I'll... So angel's I'll grace is like very sus- suspect, right? But at least it saves you. Whereas the swords is not a guaranteed... Sa- like, angel's grace guarantees I don't die this turn. Except that one time Seth gave me loss of life. But- <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, but it doesn't save you against but commander damage. Doesn't it doesn't save, save you against, against combos. Like, many, many cases, right? There, there are way more cases where swords does nothing for you there's no way there's i no i don't way i don't true. see where that case is yeah all like right I, you could disagree these are spicy takes <laughs> but i i will I die on a hill point. on I, this one i will die I appreciate on a hill on this you, Richard, one for the hot takes that was a spicy one and i <laughs> I, I thank you for sharing we're, we're thinking days of like swordsing the sierra angel to not die right like this is not no. what happens oh, in no. 2022 it's, right you're like a, shiv like... and dragon pump for 19 i'm like i swords it gotcha like that's not no. what happens anymore right they're like i corvold loop you and you swords it at instant speed i sack more stuff you're dead right you're like it doesn't you know it doesn't help no one man 
All right. Totally. All right. You All gotta, right. You got to give me a spicy take now. All right. I got a spicy <laughs> take. This is unfortunately a take that I feel is still still spicy in 2022. Um, proxies are good. They're good for Commander, and you should normalize proxies in your playgroups. That's my hot take. Uh, proxies, uh, for people who don't know, are basically like uh, fake versions of cards that are not trying to pretend that they are cards. They're not counterfeits. Counterfeits are trying to trick people into into believing that these are legitimate real cards. Uh, proxies, however, are just, you know, these are clearly fake cards uh, that allow people to play cards uh, that they represent, but without, you know, spending the money to buy the official version of it. And this has been a hot button topic for a long, the longest time in Commander. I actually, my first play group was a proxy friendly group uh, because a lot of the people had like really large collections in 2011 and they had like all the original duels, all the original fetch lands and stuff. They want to play it uh, like their cradles and everything. But like the rest of us, we came in for pre-cons and we were being outclassed. So they said, just proxy it. It's absolutely fine. You get to play with uh, the same cards as we do. And I like that as a great equalizer. Now, a lot of people uh, have different takes on why they don't like it. Uh, the one the one that I hear less often these days is that, like, if you really want to play these cards, you should spend the money just like I did. And I feel like that, car- that argument has fallen by the wayside because, you know, spending $20 on the plateau that I bought in 20, 2011 uh, is very different than telling them to spend uh, three hundred and fifty dollars for the plateau in twenty twenty two. Like there's the 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 prices of cards have gone crazy bananas. Um, the other argument that I hear uh, that has more traction these days is that like if you allow proxies, then people will abuse it by upping the power level of their playgroup. Because now suddenly they couldn't afford these mana crypts and everything. Now they will play the mana crypts and you're going to uh, power up your playgroups over where they used to be. And I will say that's conflating the issue. The issue is uh, power level disparity and not the fact that proxies are are causing an issue. You need to talk about power levels with your playgroup. If you want to play at higher power level, then play at higher power level. If you don't want to play with mana crypts and everything, just don't proxy those. Have a discussion with your playgroup. Figure out the play play power level you want but proxies are basically allowing people who do not want to spend or cannot spend as much money as other people to play the same game of magic and stop making commander pay to win which i feel it's increasingly becoming like magic is getting more and more expensive commander is getting more and more expensive even the pre-cons are going up in price and like just the the value of staples are going up bananas a levels and Proxies are a way to make sure that everybody has access to cards and isn't gatekeeping people out and being pay to win. And I think it's really good. And we need to, as as the prices keep going up, ridiculous levels, we need to normalize uh, proxies a bit more. Also, another upside of proxies is for lazy players like me who don't want to move one card around numerous times and doesn't want to buy. Like example, I don't want to buy another Fierce Guardianship. So I just proxy all the other copies. And there's also an upside to proxies that you get to, like, get some cool artwork that wouldn't normally be there. That would, like, you can get your own, I don't know, Marvel set of things that you want to do. But yeah, I, I, I think that makes a lot of sense, right? Like, it allows everyone to play the game they want to play. I mean, I've been on the other side of that group also, though, where, like, on the other side of the coin where, or that, that, that group that you had mentioned where we went a little too hard on the proxies, right? But then we dialed it back. So, so like, yeah, like, uh, even, even then, it gave us the, uh, there, there was something to learn from being able to, like, like, from that power creep, uh, like, like, frenzy that we did, right? There was something that we learned in that, okay, maybe this is too strong for us. So, we, luckily, we got to learn that uh, without investing $200 in a mana crypt and then going, ooh, let's walk that back but also be out $200. So, I think that proxies are just as important just because it's also allowing playtesting. So I, 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 I love that. I, I love the idea of proxies. I don't care w- w- what card it is. Just, just it, it, you know, if you, you'll figure it out. This way you can figure it out. I would say if people are afraid of like LGS is not making money because they're not selling as much, I would argue the opposite. There's so many decks that people would like to try out, but they can't because they don't want to invest like $500 to play test a deck that they don't even know if they'll like or not proxying allows you to play them and then if you really love it commander players 
love their bling. They love their bling. If you really love a deck, chances are you're going to buy the, the, the regular versions of those cards anyway, if you do invest into it, and then you'll bling it out. And if, you know, you have to already spend $500 on your deck in the first place just to try it before you even know, chances are you're not going to do that. And proxying now allows you to do so. I would argue the opposite. You actually probably make more sales as an LGS if you allowed proxies. I think it I think it depends from the LGS perspective. I think letting high value cards be proxied is definitely a win for the LGS because then hopefully people will buy the cheap stuff to like fill out their deck. But if people I don't know, there's this weird I really dislike how proxies and counterfeits has been used so interchangeably a lot. And I've seen looking at like researching the the counterfeit community, people going with like basic lands and things like that. And it's kind of like, I don't know if you're going that far down the down the rabbit hole where you're getting like fake basic lands and fake two dollar comments i think at that point you're you are potentially hurting your lgs like if you can't go in and buy a you know a 50 cent uncommon and you're gonna like proxy that there's probably a line there where eventually it hurts lgs but i think in general proxies are are a big positive for uh for the community and i also don't i don't condone pro- uh counterfeits like if you try yeah. to make a a card that's to, to to fool people into thinking it's real. Not, I, I don't support that at all. But proxies, I do. I'm, I'm pretty mixed on this one. So from a gameplay perspective, like it's ridiculous that we pay so much money to play this game. So like evening, even evening out the playing field, having everyone have access to all the cards is great, right? But you guys are missing a key aspect of this game, which is it is pay to win. Like there is a reason. People feel very proud of their blinged out decks and they spend literally hundreds of dollars on their decks, right? And then if someone else comes and doesn't spend the same amount, you feel cheapened by that, right? Like maybe directly or indirectly, right? There's like some like, I worked so hard for this and, you know, I bought this and then this other person didn't, right? And when you have that disagreement is where you have that kind of like proxies are no good, right? It's like a luxury item, right? If the reason Lamborghinis are so sought after is because they're expensive, right? I'm sure there's some mm-hmm. enthusiasts out there like, yeah, yeah, I like the performance of it. But, you know, like 99% of people are buying it for a status symbol. And like it or not, I think magic cards are a status symbol. Yeah, right? but so does it, you if you buy a Lamborghini, to the game. but if you buy a Lamborghini and I buy a beat up garbage car that's $5,000, does that devalue yours? If we can get the same performance at the track on it, yeah, <laughs> right? Like, if you somehow cheated, your, like, if you stole a Lamborghini somehow, right, and and did, I think it does, right? Like, the, but the, if it, the problem is, you know, if I spent a long time getting a dual land, right, yeah. and then you show up with a proxy dual land, right, is that fair to the person who spent, right? And we would say gameplay-wise, it's fair, right? But the reason why we spend so much money on Magic is Magic is somehow a status symbol, Right. But like you have you have the real card. I only like if I come with a proxy and it's like Yeah, it's but then a proxy, now you beat it's me like with it doesn't your have that card. card. Now I'm super salty, right? Like that's the problem. Well, well if, I'm not saying I agree with this, but can you not see why people get upset about that, right? Yeah, but I I tell them tough. Like I don't know like if if you're buying cards and your self-worth is is attached to how much you spent on it and other people playing the same cards as you more cheaply makes you feel embarrassed about it then you probably made a bad decision buying those winged out cards magic. how else can magic players justify spending thousands of dollars on cards because right? it makes if you not, happy that somehow it makes you feel good right like it makes you feel good why? but like if other people are playing the same cards as you but they're doing it cheaply and and that makes you feel embarrassed that makes you feel uh, like ashamed or salty then you just have to internalize the fact that maybe you should sell your bling dot cards. Like that's that's a you problem. That's not a that's not a. I mean, I agree. <laughs> that's I, not I, a proxy world, person that's what problem. Happens, but I don't think that's how our society is set up, right? Like we have luxury goods and luxury items that, by definition, are luxury, right? Like you yeah. don't need them. The problem is Wizards has tied functionality to these luxury items, right? Imagine if your five thousand dollar car didn't actually drive you anywhere. You could go like one mile and it stopped. And then you're like, yeah. how the heck am I supposed to go to work? I need to buy a Lambo to go to work. That's ridiculous, right? But some yeah. other person like recognizes this, spent 20 years grinding their life away to buy the Lambo so they can drive, right? And then somehow someone took a shortcut and got their own like $1,000 Lambo, right? Like not saying I agree with this, but I think we have to take into fact this is a pay-to-win trading card game. 
into effect. And that's what magic has been. And I would rather everything be free, but it's not. And that's why we spend money. Like, how else do we justify having thousands of dollars in our collection? Well, how do you justify, like, a, like, let's say you have a card. You have a brainstorm. I have a brainstorm. It's 25 cents. Yep. You know? You have a brainstorm. It's Mercadian Mask and it's foil. Yep. You have a bling that card. We're functionally playing the same card. I yep. spent 25 cents for mine. You spent $250 for yours. Choice? I don't know. It's choice, right? Uh, right. It's, it's, and but, but I chose what if, what, if it's a, what if it's one that's not a choice, like a dual land? Well, the reserve list is, is a dumb system. <laughs> and I don't know you got caught. Like, <laughs> this is why like, I mixed you up the chose, subject. Right? I mean, but you I, chose not to proxy. You chose to buy the card. So think think like, okay, there well, you go. Maybe maybe you're I, thinking a little too far on the extremes. Like, it doesn't need to be a dual. Like, example, I would... Are, are you side. Yeah, dock side. Dock dock side. $100 the, card. Great hand. Yeah, don't is, don't right? spend $100 on a piece of paper if, you, if you're not, like, super invested into it. I but don't then know. why is someone spending $0 and playing dock side? Because I chose not to <sighs> use my hard-earned $100 on dock side, right? But, like, I have a dock side. I don't feel bad if somebody else shows up with a dock side. Like, I have, I have a bling that cauldron her. deck. We're not all good people. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, isn't there, if you take it to the full extreme and this isn't realistic at all but like if everyone just proxied everything wouldn't the game just cease to exist like uh, there probably has to be uh, there probably has to be a limit right because if everyone just proxied everything then wizards would stop making magic right like because they wouldn't be making any money because everyone would just run the proxies like isn't there is there a point where it becomes a, a negative Overall, to but the that's game. like that's like saying like if you have regular cards, then why would you ever buy foils? Why would anybody buy foils if you have the regular version? But people do because they like shinies, they like bling, they like they like flexing, they like making their deck extra special. Like I have proxy, I have a proxy CDH deck, and I have uh, eight thousand dollar Cauldra deck. I have both. Like I don't know, I don't see, I don't see why it's one or the other. What about art? Yeah. What if we're just playing with only proxies? Is the lore and flavor of magic just like nigh? Like, cause if, so when we say proxies, we prioritize gameplay, right? Like the spike yeah. aspect, right? Even playing field, all cards. But the art, the lore, collectability, Hasbro profits, <laughs> like go out the window, <laughs> right? <laughs> so is gameplay what we should be prioritizing is, I guess, the question. That that is what I'm prioritizing. So like when I, yeah. I I I don't care if you just have a little ripped piece of napkin and you write the card's name on it, right? Like that that's it. Like I I I would rather the gameplay be there. All those expensive cards, like that that's great. Like if you if you want to have these expensive cards, wouldn't you feel more uh like full if if like at least emotionally full if like you got to actually play with them and play against people and like like who can that now like example if you're a friend in the pod now uh who's just missing some cards it's a key element just completely shuts them off from playing a deck they've wanted to play well wouldn't you want them to just kind of i don't care proxy it so that at least i get to use these expensive cards that i've sunk a ton of money into I, I, isn't that I, like vintage and legacy like yeah, that's the whole is, this issue is too of much them. goodwill this is too much goodwill <laughs> i think this is just regular sentiment though like is it know. But why are people salty about this then? Like, is it that literally the people that okay, I don't want to classify them as not goodwill, right? I think it's Buyers human nature, remorse? right? For to like feel like you know something is not equal. But well, if everyone felt like this, then proxies would not be a debatable subject. We just all use proxies, right? I, I so think not, clearly not everyone thinks like this, right? That that is that is a bit weird, right? I, I don't I don't know why. Like example, like it's a collectible card game, so like me collecting these has made me personally happy, right? So I don't care what you do. Like I don't care if you proxy every one of your islands, right? Like I, the the thing here is like you do what you want to do, but I've already gotten my my like my money's worth has already uh has already been achieved, right? Like I've I've got the card I want. I own this. This is real. Hopefully, uh, I hopefully own a real card. Uh, and uh, yeah, like that that's good enough for me, right? Otherwise, I don't care what you do. I care about the gameplay. Wait, do you see this as a rule zero thing? I don't even think it's I, I don't even care if you if you walked up to me the, the only thing I'd care about is like if you were playing a deck it's all proxies and it's like naked 
cat booby ladies or something, right? Like all over the place. Like that hmm. that that's that's like okay, that that's a little bit different, right? Like I'd probably want to like know about that rule zero wise, right? But but if you're if you're talking about like just like showing up and like as I said, you just wrote a card's name on the back of a P, of like a basic land, I don't care. Just know what it does. That's it. Yeah, I'm I'm in the same place as Krim, honestly. If you have counterfeit cards, I'm gonna be very upset. And I probably I might not even play with you if you're someone who sports counterfeit cards. I'll play with anyone, but that's like kind of my my red line is counterfeit cards. That's something that I think is actually kind of important to fight against. But as far as just having cards, I don't even care if you tell me, honestly. Like if we just start putting a human commander and a proxy comes out, I'm not gonna I don't know. I'm not gonna like make a big deal about it, or probably even notice. Like I'm gonna be focused on on the game. Uh, so that's kind of where I land on well, it. What secret layer drop is that? Where you just uh, you know, it's like a, it's like just the, I, the name poorly written on the I, back. I agree with all of you guys, but I think we're too nice. Like, like I'm the person. Like I, I told you guys the story, right? I play a lot of Legacy back in the day, and I swear to God, I've seen so many fake cards across the table that you know, I don't care, right? I'm like I'm here to play Legacy. I'm <laughs> like that play, mechanic yeah. island is so counterfeit, but whatever. Let's go, right? <laughs> but I, I feel most people are not like this. Like, I feel it, cr- it creates a feel bad. So if you rule zero a tournament and say proxies are allowed, I think that's great, right? And everyone knows, so they can proxy their own cards. But if someone doesn't put proxies in their deck, plays against someone that puts proxies in their deck, then I think a mismatch happens and there's a feel bad, right? So it needs to be rule zero and in or from a tournament organization perspective. But, like, if you just show up with proxies, I think... Like, there's conflict, and I think it could be justified, right? Like, I think someone who decided not to put in a dual land because they didn't want a proxy plays against someone who has a dual land. There's an unfair advantage. So I think you just need to match it together. So, like, power level discussion kind of question. Like, do that, but... But, Yeah. I I think a lot of people who who are against it, they usually say, like, uh, I'm afraid that if I allowed proxies and everybody would start bringing other mana crypts and stuff and like my deck would not be able to match them and now I would have to proxy as well and I don't really want to do that. But I think that's that's a power level thing. You have to talk to your play group on like where you want to be power wise, like what type of game experience you want. And then like I, I don't think proxying is that is the issue. It's it's the power level is the issue. And proxying to me just kind of enables people to play without feeling like they have to spend that much money, allows them to try new decks and allows them to experiment experiment more um, in, a, in a good way. It's like, I, I hate the fact that like commanders becoming more and more like gatekeepy where like you're, if you have money, then you're allowed to play whatever you want. And if you don't have money, then good luck, I guess, with whatever you got. <laughs> I mean, that is kind of bad. But like <laughs> modern is kind of the same way. And in my, it like, it's even worse in competitive formats because then you actually have tournaments and then there are rules about this. You can't just show up to your yeah. F&M and play a proxy because it goes against wizard's rules. So... I think, it's I think that's a magic now. problem more than a commander and specific problem. Put maybe towards proxy should be directed at wizards who just lower card prices. <laughs> yeah, but <laughs> like, what's I feel what's like we've tried way, that and that but hasn't what's, really worked. At the end <laughs> of the day, ways? is it not still a collectible card game? Right, it's still yeah. a collectible card game. So there are going to be high prices. I, I trust me. I want cheap cards because I'm always the ones that like you know it sucks having to pay the money for it. But like at the same time, I am at the point where I also understand this is a collectible card game. If I cannot buy it, I, I it, it's unfortunate, right? Uh, but like I also like I, in that uh, like to, to like bring it up. It's I, I want the proxies to exist so like this way you can play with the high powered cards too. So I, I don't know. I mean, I I, I don't think lowering the prices uh, is going to be easy. Uh, and on top of that, like, I mean, it'd be nice to know that someday I could own an, an expensive card, right? Yeah. But if everything is a cheap card, I don't know. Like, it's it, it loses the collectability of the collectible card game. I, I will say this, uh, that I, I think the prices now and the prices a decade ago are so night and day. Like, if, if, you sh- if I was joining or thinking about joining Commander in 2022 as opposed to 2011... I would look at the prices of the decks that I want to play and I would not I would not join the game. I just wouldn't. Like like the decks that I was building in 2011 would cost me like $50, now they're $350. Back then I would not be able to afford any of uh, any of the decks that I wanted to play without proxying. Um so I would just be turned away from the game. And my fear is that we're we're reaching the point like especially with pandemic prices. Right? So if you looked at if you looked at the graph at like most 
uh, staples and commander when 2019 hit the prices skyrocketed skyrocketed it was absolutely insane and and now i just i just my main fear with the commander format in general a casual format uh is that we're not seeing we're, we're pushing away a lot of new players with the ludicrous level of the prices and we're just squeezing uh the current players for all they have with bling and masterpiece and and secret lair and this is not a good long-term health plan if we're not bringing in new players because they're being put off by the prices the format will just go downhill like that's that's where <laughs> we're need at to be squeezed together it's over but if you proxy you don't get squeezed then i gotta i gotta fill hasbro's profits myself <laughs> we gotta, we gotta <laughs> certainly <laughs> certainly but if if everybody starts normalizing proxying and uh maybe that will put some a little bit of of a push on wizards of the coast and hey maybe we should lower the prices by increasing supply on staples no. instead of dangling like a couple reprints every <laughs> single year it's, it's, yeah what? that's that, that that, that's not going to make Watsy lower the price. Well, you can you can play the game without playing Watsy's game. You know, like you pro- proxy your decks. If, you, if I told you, hey, you want to start playing Commander, the decks you want are three hundred fifty dollars. You're not going to be like, wow, let me cut up pieces of paper and write out the cards I want. You're like, I'm going to go play Elden Ring, <laughs> right? I'll see you later, right? So I mean, that's how I started. I I my I was a proxy friendly group. I had a Zedri precon. And we were playing against people with like survival of the fittest and get is cradles. And they said, hey, you can just proxy the thing you want. And that's how I started. I also don't know if the people would ever be happy. Like, that's something else that I've learned is, like, uh, wizards can't decrease prices enough to make people happy with the price of magic. Like, if you hear people's answer, if you ask, like, how much should a fetch land cost, a lot of people say, like, I should be able to get a playset for a dollar or something. Like, it it is, like, literally free, like, uh, buying a pack of gum or something. So I feel like no matter what Wizards does, you're going to have a group of people that are are not going to be happy about the card prices. Like no matter I, no matter how cheap it gets, a I don't think that's an excuse set. not to do anything because the prices <laughs> the prices before 2019 and 229. Like if you say like w- people are never going to be happy with the prices, so therefore let's just be happy with every card that is uh, desirable and commander being at least fifty dollars. Like I I feel like you're just letting them off the hook too easy. Not not that though, but I feel like we need to meet in the middle a little bit. Like the current price from Wizards is too high, <laughs> but the community also needs to be like, oh, if a fetch is ten dollars, like that's a pretty like that's a pretty good deal compared to a hundred dollars called Igtard. But sure, uh, we got to be somewhat realistic with our expectations because we I don't even think a forty dollar right dock size is good. Yeah, in the middle. Like, uh, Nana Crypt, it's 150. How about just eighty dollars? We'll meet in the middle. It's like so. Well, it's what price do you think it should be? I'm actually curious. It should be like I, I am one of those people who was like they should be like the baseline card should be dirt cheap, and then all the blinged versions should be as high and expensive as possible. Give me a baseline version of Mana Crypt. You can make a white border. You can print it in like revised or something. Give it, and Mark Rosewater has done a little scribbly scrib of the of the artwork. You know, look, it looks like trash, right? Give me that, sell it to me for five bucks or whatever, and then have like the masterpiece version, which is like beautiful foiling, br- brand new artwork, all that <laughs> wonderful stuff, and that will be like a thousand dollars. I don't care. Do you- let me play the, the game. <laughs> Uh, do you think people would actually be happy with that? Or do you think, because one thing I've also noticed is people, some people like to say, oh, it's about accessibility. And then they're like, well, I need the masterpiece mana crypt. <laughs> I, need, I need to have like, I'm going to go get a counterfeit of the, you know, the masterpiece version because just getting the cheap version isn't good enough for me. So I feel like that kind of like counteracts the argument that it's all just about accessibility. I think people want the best version and they want it for free. <laughs> I don't well, think people are going to be happy with you get this crappy no art version for really cheap when there's this really cool. We see people freak out about like the yellow what I hit a sugu or whatever that's so expensive. There's people that are angry about that cuz I don't have the yellow one that's super duper rare from the collector boosters and I deserve that. Like I the one from the pack isn't good enough for me. So I feel like there is it. some level of entitlement <laughs> that comes into the conversation too. To yeah, some extent. you should buy it. Like you want you want the super duper rare version then buy the super duper rare version. It's that's the whole Wizards point. Wizards has gotten us addicted to the crack and then now we need it. <laughs> And we become <laughs> irrational, and we're like, I need, I need <laughs> <Yeah>. Masterpiece <laughs> Edition, yeah. one of one, six thousand dollars. Wa- that's how crypt. Wizards wants us to be. Like, I think that's the condition Wizards wants us in, yeah? Like the Viscera Seer? 
The backwards uh, one? Yeah, the backwards yeah. one. Yeah. Or the forward was one, not good enough. secret lair that was like <laughs> collector number... Oh, that was collector number 69 or something? Yeah. Yeah. Remember? I think, it, I think extra, it was the Viserys extra expensive. Here, yeah. All right. Uh, so we do have a podcast to finish. So I yeah, will yeah, drop that on MTG Goldfish. On any deck list, you can press the print proxies button and print <laughs> all the proxies you want. And then nice. I guess... Make sure your playgroup is fine with proxies before <laughs> <laughs> sure. before you go ham. And sure. then we'll we'll let wizards sort this out. Let somehow. us know in the comment section below what are you uh-huh. talking about proxies and then keep it civil or else I'll delete the nasty stuff. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Seth, uh-huh. what do you got? Something less something less hot button, I guess. Uh my my second hot take is, and I've said this many times in the past, uh Soaring should be banned. Every I, I don't know why that's a hot take, because I think everyone knows that that is just the truth and that the format would be better if it was banned. But for a lot of people, that's a hot take because people get really upset when you say that and they they love their soul rings. And maybe it ties back into our proxy conversation. Maybe part of the love for soul ring is because it's been printed a million times and it's a really powerful card that costs like a dollar or something. So everyone can have one for every one of their decks. So maybe that's part of why people get so defensive about it. But I am a very firm believer that commander is a more fun, like going back to the gameplay aspect of it, commander is more fun when you don't have those fast mana, mana crypt soul ring starts. So I would like to see soul ring banned. I agree fully. I mean, I agree fully. at this point it's just getting grandfathered in, right? Like that's it. Because otherwise, if it were a power level thing, that card, the, like fast man as a whole, is pretty pretty miserable. We just talked I don't about think... how we shouldn't do things just because they've always been done this way. But but Soul Ring is the format. No, <laughs> can you really oh, remove God. it? I I would love to see it banned. Please, please. I don't I don't think there's ever been a game that has been a net gain in fun seeing a turn what, one. What Sol if you're Ring. the Soul Ring player though? Isn't that your then, one chance for glory? <laughs> that <laughs> like, oh. I, well, that's why I use the word net gain of fun. I gain <laughs> some fun by having my turn one soaring, but the net gain is is a loss. It's actually a loss because the other people are groaning. They're like, ah, oh, turn one soaring. Oh, we have to deal with the arch enemy now. And it just doesn't lead to good, interesting games. Like, yes, uh, sometimes you're going to stop the arch enemy who runs away off the game because of fast mana. Uh, sometimes you don't. Either way, I don't find I don't find that situation particularly exciting. And in my streams that I'm going to plug right now, uh, we have a house ban on fast mana, and games are so much better. I think because of that, it just feels so much better without mana crypt, without Sol Ring, without Dockside. Uh, I, I know I'm expanding it, but <laughs> in general, I I count how do you I sell count cards, uh, Homer. If you don't print new fast mana every year, how do you sell Jesus. cards? <laughs> Oh man, the amount of non games these these cards drum up is just so. I, I think the argument for Soul Ring is the RNG aspect. It's your one chance for glory to RNG your way into a victory, which is what Magic wants, right? They want the lesser skilled player to be able to win, and you can win when you Soul Ring into Signet into whatever and like just end the game there. So it doesn't make for better gameplay. Obviously, that's terrible gameplay, but it does allow you to spike a game against like lsv or something once in a while right so i think that's why they keep it otherwise what's the point right (laughs) that's true though although like in our experience and i think command zone did a study on this you actually win less when you get the soul ring on turn one star and we see you like you're winning (laughs) i mean like look at phil phil's a great example like phil gets off to these like i'm winning starts and then by like turn five he's like just bashed back into the the stone port and i feel bad for him like i I feel guilty for him I think that's that. Like we're gonna be checking it at the end of this season, but I I have a feeling that the turn one soul ring start actually increases your your win percentage. Do you think? Yeah, so? I, yeah, I definitely, yeah. It definitely helped Richards when, mm-hmm. when we were uh, when we I, I saw the game that went up just uh, earlier today. Uh, that, not having the, a soul that's ring. That's the anomaly, right? But there are I many times know. where uh, it doesn't work. But I mean, it doesn't matter what happens, right? It's like is the net gameplay fun? I think we all agree the net gameplay is negative. Right, because someone gets taken out, an then everyone game. is dirtling around, and you know whatever, yeah. right? But yeah, I, I don't know. Should we ban brainstorm and legacy too? I don't know. <laughs> like, Wait, but what what's the argument for mana crypt? Mana crypt is even better than Sol Ring. Why don't we ban Sol uh, mana crypt? It's not even in the precons because the RC doesn't see it enough games because it's too expensive, Tomer. <laughs> yeah, that, that actually, <laughs> I feel like RC can why? afford a mana crypt. All right, but, I'm sure their their collection is robust enough. I mean, we should we should ban that one as well. Like, I would I would be in favor of banning all the plus mana 
I think you'd, you'd have to ban all the fast mana together, right? Like just banning a soul ring doesn't matter because you still have mana crypt, right? So you'd have to take yeah. them all out in the same BNR. I think you just need soul ring and, and mana crypt. Like the 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 mocks and are, are way <sighs> steps below mana vault, like pro mocks. Those and are stuff? those are the three I lean towards: mana crypt, mana vault, and soul ring. Because I feel like if you ban mana crypt and soul ring, then mana vault will see a lot more play. I don't just even because know there's mana not... vault in most well, but you have soul ring now. Like that's yeah. pretty positive, isn't it? Like plus what is it? Plus three, but then it's, it doesn't untap, so it's not repeated. Yeah, but it's it is like, like very ritual, positive. Right? It's, it's only yeah. really good if you want to like combo or you you just want to drop your 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 commander like immediately. That's yeah, like a jeweled lotus almost. Yeah, yeah. Lotus. yeah. I wouldn't mind getting rid of jeweled lotus. Too. I'm pretty oh. sure no one will ever do anything about this. So jeweled lotus. This is nah. a new point. No, I don't think RC I, would ever the face because you know they're gonna get a lot of blowback and like for what, oh, right? Yeah. So like I don't mm-hmm. think they would do it. Imagine the RC doing anything. Wow, <laughs> that's crazy. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, being dark side. Uh, <laughs> all right, uh, we've already agreed that Sol Ring should be banned. Um, Krim, do you have something that will divide us as a community and as a group? Yeah, probably. Uh, <laughs> I think light stacks is okay in casual. I think too many times that you hear, oh, that's like a Staxi kind of card, like Athalia, or, and, and then leading it into like three-man Athalia, and then like going into like a Rest in Peace, a Ley Line of the Void, any of those. I think those are all fine and casual. I think Opposition Agent's fine and casual. I think even Notion Thief and then like Hall Breacher and all that stuff was fine and casual. So, uh, I, I don't know. The only, to be honest with you, the only thing Staxi that I just think is not great is Tor- uh, not Torp Orb, that's fine too. Uh, 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 Winter Orb and 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 any of the orbs, except for like Torp Orb and 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 one like what is it? Static Orb, I think, is what the other one is. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, like anything like that. Those like Winter Orb, Static Orb, and like I don't know what's another big like a, a big Staxy piece that I, I can't even think of right now. I own a stasis. <laughs> oh yeah, stasis. There you go. Stasis. Yeah, like I mean, I think stasis should also just go because of the the artwork. It, it it's it's offensive to me <laughs> because it's just like it's like wow, that is that is whoa, that is aggressive. What's wrong with stasis? I know, I don't no, even no, no. It's actually it. just a funny artwork. I, I I think it's pretty funny. But okay, in all seriousness, I I think light stacks is fine. I think you can totally play like an archon of Amiria. That's fine. I think Dronith magistrate. That's fine. Like those are all cards that I think are a okay in commander. Casually, I. I think all those cards you just listed on their own are fine, but when you have a deck that has 30 of them together, most people are probably not going to have fun playing with you. <laughs> it's uh, on their own in Archon or Thalia or something, but once you lump them all together and that's what your deck's doing, I think that's where it becomes problematic for a lot of people. Is it, though? <sighs> like, I, I don't... I don't find it to be that bad to be honest with you like yeah it sucks like it's like a, it, like i'm not like excited that you're you're like dunking me i, with I think it's like, no longer casual so like can you build a deck to beat this yes right you just load up on your spot removal you just load up on like eighteen thousand answers and have like a one card win con and you can fight your way through stacks right but if people are trying to cast big angels they don't have enough removal to get out from under your stacks pieces, right? So they they will just be stacked. Therein lies the, the problem, <laughs> uh, right? But then then I can't play angels anymore, right? Now I need to put in like thirty answers, and then I can only fit two cards to win con. So it's thorical, and then here we are, <laughs> I mean, right? So like what I think are you that's the about? that's I, the problem. You're no longer I, casual if you're prepared to, you know, do this, right? Because I, when people answer your stacks pieces, you're like, well. You gotta double down. You double stacks them, or you back up the <laughs> counter magic, or whatever, and it's like an escalating Make a war, stack sandwich. right? So I think, and then that's and then the issue. you and then you lose. That's fine. Go to the yeah, next. Yeah, but game. then I, I wanted to play an angel deck. I didn't want to come like fight stacks yeah, pieces, but... right? I think that's the issue, though. No? I'm with I'm with Crib. I feel like light stacks, light stacks, and a little bit of it is totally fine. I think Seth, Seth said the same thing. But too. A, like a little, if and you a drop lot. a Thalia. Like, you drop like a one Thalia Lieutenant Cathar, and now all your non creature spells cost one more. Like, if that just shuts you out of playing the game, then I don't know what deck you're playing. Like, <laughs> but, but why wouldn't uh, you add a second Thalia? Like, it, it, either it does nothing, then your deck yeah. sucks. Like, why'd you bring it? <laughs> right. Or it does something, in which case everyone is like locked out of the game, right? Like, 
You know, there's like no middle ground, right? You want all stacks players to play bad decks, like that's why. You, that's why stacks cards need to have more upside for yourself. Like I'm almost turning into the opposition is good, actually. Like because it gets you a card, right? Like it yeah. nets you a card, and then it gets dealt with, and then it's like whatever. But I already netted a card. Yep. I slowed yeah, you down a I bit. Did. I actually, yeah. I'm, I actually you don't feel the need now. to layer on stacks pieces with opposition yeah. agent, right? But if you're playing yeah. a Thalia, you need a lot of Thalias yeah. to make it work, right? So, I also yeah. like your Sharn too. It gets me two lands. Like you deal with your Sharn, sure, whatever. But I just gained two lands out the of it too. Unbanned Hullbreacher. This is the yeah. hero we needed. <laughs> no, <laughs> bring, <laughs> no it. Not. bring it. I, I, I was Remove losing. Flash. I was losing <laughs> to that the same way I would lose to a Notion Thief, right? So do it. <laughs> There was there was actually an interesting topic. It was a Twitter. People were, was uh, Kess, somebody was asking um, what what their least favorite card is, and and a lot of people picked uh, a Sax card, or I would consider it Sax. Rest in peace. People said like it is their least favorite card because if they're playing a graveyard deck, they just can't do anything. And I was shocked. I never knew Rest in Peace was that hated. I have it in my Zedru deck because what I like to do is I like to play Rest in Peace and I like to donate it to the graveyard player so they can see it on their side of the battlefield. <laughs> trolling, yeah. Think, yeah. You know what's funny? It's a little, a little, a little fun. It's a little, just <laughs> jokes, just jokes. But apparently people are like, if I saw this every game, I would never play Commander. So... I don't, the I don't, persistent I don't, effect I don't is the problem, that. right? Like, if you wipe their graveyard once, they're like, okay, you got me, but I can rebuild and try to play yeah. my game. But this is just like, I'm shut out until I draw my answer, yeah. right? And I think it goes for anything. Like, you know, a wrath no one cries over, but if you, like, throw down whatever thing Krim always throws down on us that just prevents all <laughs> creatures from coming on, right? Like you're like, tainted either. <laughs> <some non-rain laughs> yeah, you're like, oh, this is horrendous, right? Like, I can't recover from this until I explicitly remove it right so i think it's yeah. the persistent effect that gets people rather than the one time i got interacted with and mm. it, it doesn't do anything except hate on your opponent at least with like athalia even there's there's a body you can attack and put an equipment <laughs> on it and it feels like you're like <laughs> furthering your g- game plan to some extent when if you just slam a rest in peace that's just saying like you're not doing what you're trying to do like you're not you're not doing anything for your game plan by playing a card like that other than hurting your <laughs> opponents then, I draw a card and gain a life off Zedru. Then, <laughs> well, then, the then, answer, then answer it. That's all. You got to just be prepared. Okay. For, if, the, if, if you are the graveyard deck, right, you once again should be very ready to stop the graveyard hate. Or, right? Like, come on. We don't all have 10 rats in our deck, Krim. That doesn't, that is, I, that doesn't stop. Actually, hot take number two. Rest in Play pe- more board wipes. Rest in peace. Assists like so, whoever plays the rest in peace is helping me out because then it makes my wrath super good. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think to tie it back, like yeah, I, I think light stacks is fine. Uh, you'll know when you're playing a lot, right? Like you'll know, like if I if I have thirty stacks pieces, then yeah, I, I I think I think we know what you're trying to do, right? Which is fine at the end of the day. Like I don't think it's problematic either. Like I, when I when I was like, what is it with the season with when Yasharn came out? That was the first thing, one of the first decks I built, right? And enough of the pieces together does eventually lock enough pe- lock enough people out. So it it's almost like having a, a win condition in that, like, you know, it, it it is like having a win condition, right? Like locking somebody out is a win condition, right? Like would you you would concede to an emblem, right? So like it, it, mo- like it, this is no different than that. I concede to stasis if you have Derevi on the battlefield. Like- yeah, if you have a, a... a combo piece for it, or like yeah. the lattice lock with Karn, if you can't kill the Karn, like stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but then there's that one person that's like, we can fight out of this, and then it holds <laughs> you your pot up for can't. another 50 minutes <laughs> because <laughs> you, you can't if... reset to the next game, right? <laughs> then you all concede, and you just agree that the person who locked wins. <laughs> yeah, if you if you want a hot take, normalize conceding in Commander. In 1v1, I'll scoop on turn two, like just whatever, you got me, but... I feel like I can't do that in Commander. I wish I, I felt the freedom to be able to to concede more often when a situation like that happened. Oh, I won't concede if it like puts the other people at a disadvantage. That's the problem. Yeah, that's that is the problem is when you disagree that the game is untenable yeah. or that you you know like if everyone agreed on it then yeah the, the concession is perfect right. But the problem is mm-hmm. one person will think the game can go on 
uh, the other person thinks it cannot, and they don't want to, you know, put up with this. And then you end up see every like multiplayer online game, right? You're yeah, like, I want to click, yeah. go to the next game, but one person is like, "We got this," and they may be right, they may be wrong, who knows, <laughs> right? But everyone is in a disagreement, and they're all grumpy, right? So <laughs> it's even worse because like if you concede in like league or whatever, uh, you just jump into the next game. But like if I concede from a four player commander game, it's not like I'm going to hop into another commander game that's ready to fire. It's like. I need to wait until my group is done <laughs> so we can play game two. So, yeah, conceding is, is rough in, in Commander. Um, all right. Well, we're, we're brushing through these topics. Uh, Richard, hit us with the next one. Don't worry. I got, I got a spicy one for you guys. I know you guys yeah. disagree. Giving an opponent stuff is good. So good that it is banned in trade secrets. So you guys don't agree secret rendezvous. That's giving you and your opponent stuff. Skullwinder, you know, eternal witness for you and a friend. Scheming symmetry, double tutor. Uh, and more recently, turn. Seth has discovered mm-hmm. the hunted creatures. Do you realize how absurd hunted horror is? Two mana, you get a 7-7 seven, uh... seven trample. And your buddy gets two 3-3 three, three centaurs. You put two mana, 13 power on the battlefield on turn two. Right? Yeah. It is absurd, and these cards should be banned, right? It creates this situation oh where God. two people are out of the game. It's like trade secrets, right? Once they push power levels All slightly right. further, it's trade that's secrets. Be the, that's the title of our video. Hunted trolls should be banned. <laughs> I think horror. Get the hunted. name right. <laughs> All the hunted are, are, I think, are good, right? Or maybe yeah. not the white one, but they're, they're, they don't need to be banned. Come on now. They, they don't Imagine this pod right here. I, on turn two, Hunted Horror, give Seth two centaurs. And mm-hmm. then we just hit Tomer over the next two turns and he's dead. Dead. And Wait, he's why holding his swords, by me? the way. So he fights swords a 7-7. Seven, seven. <laughs> Krim is right there. Tomer, <laughs> somehow in a hypothetical game, you've already pulled aggro. Dang. R- Richard, is Richard's right, though. Again? I think those cards are super underrated. Like, Richard months ago said secret rendezvous giving your opponent stuff was actually like a positive and he's right he's actually right like when you play these cards you're gonna make a deal with the person you give the tokens to so those tokens aren't gonna attack you so there's no downside you're getting a very overpowered creature for its mana value your opponent is gonna also be attacking someone that you want them to attack because they're not attacking you so that's beneficial for you that's that's absurd why aren't these cards more played like they seem so good they're great for taking down arch enemies like that's exactly the card you want if you're trying to get rid of the person that got the fill start and is pulling out ahead you know what's great adding 13 power to the battlefield that can attack that person and as early as turn two, I feel like they're really they're sleepers, and Commander Theory is just like not caught up with because <laughs> people have such a bias against these cards because of best of one that people haven't even really given them a chance in in Commander when they're actually like absurdly powerful in Commander and no one realizes it. I'm like fully I'm fully on the Richard train with this one. I, I, Why is Hunted Horror? I think I think like all those on. cards are very good. The Hunted Cycle. I think Secret Rendezvous is still bad. Uh, like that that is different yeah. because the thing here is uh, there are very different cards because I'm giving you something that I can see. I know what those are doing. There is no surprise. I'm not giving you three cards though. I refuse to give you three cards. So you give it to Krim who has two mana that can't deploy his cards. <laughs> totally fair. Totally fair. But like I I refuse to give you cards. <laughs> I will give you the the creatures. So that's why I think hunted horror, hunted whatever, uh all of those are very good. Because of the exact things that Richard has mentioned, right? Like, getting the bodies on board is huge in applying pressure. Especially against, like, you know, like, yeah, like, arch enemy stuff. So, like, that is exactly what I like to see in, in Commander. That and and more of those group effects, like Lethal Vapors or, like, uh, Feral... Not, not Whatever the one where when you get discarded, if somebody discards it, it gets put into play. But it has Hexproof unless somebody pays to. Nullhide... Yeah, there. I, Nullhide, Ferox, and things where group... Like, somebody in the group can, aff- like, uh, offer to pay it. Obviously, I want it to be more than just two mana. I want it to be multiplayer, uh, like, 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 you know, like catered to. So, uh, yeah, like, like Lethal Vapors is a hard thing to pay, but someone will do it, right? Uh, so, I, 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 but yeah, like, I, I think that Richard is right. Giving people stuff I can see is fine. Tomer. <laughs> but really? Really? Okay. Okay. Right. so so i actually think hinted horror is underrated <laughs> but also i don't think we've ever collectively been very excited or impressed by vanilla creatures 
Like, they're just big creatures. You're just putting a, some some creatures on the battlefield. You're not, like, blowing up an enchantment or artifact. You're not drawing cards. You're not, like, providing any utility other than I'm going to smack somebody. And I do agree, sometimes smacking people is underrated. Sometimes people just lose the game if you hit them hard enough. And that's the answer. That's a better answer than, like, blowing up one of their enchantments or something. So I agree. But also, like, I'm not going to be do like a mad dash to start adding the hunted cycle into my decks. And I also you don't believe I, in I attacking, just, but that's fine what? because you don't believe in attacking. But you can have a double eternal witness, skullbinder. How about I double tutor? Attack. I'm like the symmetry, aggro player right? at the table. You know what I mean? Like maybe maybe two creatures isn't fun, but how about double tutor? Is I, I that think, fun? I think symmetry. How about six is fun? cards? Right, yeah, yeah. like there, there are other uh, ways to do this, right? I I'm, wouldn't scheming symmetry willy nilly though. Like I would need an opposition agent or something, or an no, Ashiok. No, 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 no. I, you don't, I, need, I, like, you don't uh, need to do that. You just do I, the politics, and it works. It really, it really, it seems wrong. It seems wrong, but it actually, it really does work out with those cards. I'm, I'm in the Skullbinder train now. Like I, uh, oh, I, I love Skullbinder. I think it's better than Eternal Witness. Like I, I was totally against that six months ago, and I've totally changed my line of thinking about how Commander <laughs> actually because, works. I, because I think benefiting the whole table yes. is bad, <laughs> but benefiting one, one person <laughs> that you can control is. is actually really good. I and just, the death I, touch, I, Seth. You keep leaving out the yeah. death and the, touch. And the death touch, yes. Thank you. Yeah, I've, thank been on, <laughs> I've been on Team Skullwinder for a very long time. I think it's, it's, it's a great card. I'm still, even even this far into the podcast, I still refuse to say Secret Rendezvous is, mm-hmm. is great. What about Scheming Symmetry? You like, 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 so if you like Skullwinder, why don't you like Scheming Symmetry? Because usually because you can abuse it. Be, because easier. Skullwinder, you know what they're going to get because you see their graveyard. It's giving symmetry though, right? they it, get anything. It's fully stocked. You're still believing that they're going to get what they say they're going to get, right? Yeah, but if they break that that promise, then you're not I feel like going every to target single, them again. Every single time there's I've seen these cards cast, though, there is a promise, and the person, at least in our play group, keeps it. Like Every time a Skullwinder comes down, you're saying, okay, will you get this card? And the person's saying yes. Every time you cast a scheming symmetry, you're saying, okay, will you get this? And they're saying yes. Like, have we ever seen it go wrong with these cards? I can't think of a time when someone's cast a seeming symmetry and the person tutor up something and immediately just wreck the person that cast the tutor. I, I don't remember, think we've ever seen that happen. I remember Richard used it as the greatest deflection tool <laughs> when when he gave he skimming symmetry <laughs> Phil to get the heat off him because he let <laughs> Phil get omniscience in in a bid oh, to make sure I we don't to, attack yeah, him. It worked. <laughs> Right? I, mean, I cast Scheming Symmetry all the time. It's never backfired. I cast Skullwinder <laughs> all the time. It's never backfired. Well, I've never cast if I get a my combo creature. piece. If I get a combo piece off it and I win the game on my turn because so you gave I me a card. So if I suspect you have a combo, I am not targeting you, <laughs> right? I'm usually trying to get the table to do something like, oh, you know, Phil's arch enemy. Let me tutor up Seth so Seth can wipe Phil. And Seth is usually very happy to get a free tutor, right? So he will do it, mm-hmm. right? And... You know, if Seth is playing a combo deck, I'm not be like, hey, Seth, do you want to win the game? Let me give you your tutor. You know, you have a choice to make, right? It's not free. In in 1v1, you don't have a choice. Your opponent's trying to kill you. That's why these cards are terrible. But in Commander, you have a choice, right? And yes, you know, maybe once in a while it's a dead card, right? But like 95% of the time, it's a live card and it's like a double tutor or a double EWIT or, you know, whatever for you, right? So, um I, I think these cards will get banned eventually. They'll they'll keep pushing power level on these and like just imagine the game, Tomer. Like I sit down, I give Seth two three threes, you cast a soul ring or something, and then you're just getting hit by thirteen a turn. <laughs> right? And you're like, what the heck? It's like turn two. <laughs> right? You're like, what is this? Right? You can't this is not I mean I did get right? I did cast Soul Ring. I kind of deserve it. Like, <laughs> it's, it's like way banned, above Richard banned. It is? <laughs> I think so. Like, just the way trade secrets is banned, right? Trade secrets uh, they, is way uh, different though. They they won't they trade won't even dock side. I, I don't know about banned. Four mana. <laughs> like one day they'll make a dock side for two people. You and a friend both get treasures. See that, the downside. That, <laughs> right? That'll make it more fair. Yeah, it's a like, fair dock side. Don't yeah. put that evil on me. <laughs> I don't want that. No, thank risk you. study where you pair. It's the white risks that you pair with a friend and then you both draw when <laughs> anyone does. Right? They'll they'll All make right. one of these ridiculously broken cards. All right, next next commander clash. I'll put all the hunted, all the Naya hunted cards in the deck, and I'm just gonna see how they go. 
We'll win you, you over. You, you convinced me to try it. I'm not trying to see Rendezvous. See, I already tried like Seeker Rendezvous. Yeah. They were pretty good, right? Yeah, right? Like, like, and that was well. a bad one, too. Like, the red... What? That's five mana... I mean, I think as far as hunted creatures go, that's, like, mid-tier. It's not, like, a two mana 7-7. Yeah. Seven, seven, it's five mana 6-6. Six, six. The haste is nice, but I don't even think it's the most impressive of the hunted creatures, and it did really well. So I assume the, the only more one impressive could kill ones... Ten-ish. That's true. The, the, haste the, haste. Was, the haste was key. The haste was really good. And flying. Yeah. All right, I'll give it a shot. Secret Rendezvous, no. But the other ones, yes. <laughs> I also like the offering cycle, but the offering cycle is a little bit different, I guess. I feel like that was underrated. I used to champion like volcanic offering and stuff like that, but people don't really play but What's, that what's that an much. offering? The offering cycle is like from tw- 2014 or something. Uh, it's like you get to do a thing and target opponent gets to do the same thing. Uh, yeah. And then you get to do another thing, like Sylvan Offering. You make an XX uh, Tree Folk token, and then target opponent makes it XX Tree Folk token. And then you make X that's, number that's of safe, that's warriors. That's the same thing we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. But, are they severely under-costed, though, because people think it's a downside, or are they fairly costed? No, they're yeah. expensive. But Volcanic Offering doesn't let you choose your own target. So you say, I choose target non-basic, and then an opponent chooses... Uh, non-basic and blows that up but it can't be one of your non-basics and then Uh, you choose to deal seven damage to a creature and then an opponent gets to choose uh, a creature but it can't be one of yours so it can never uh, affect you so you don't you don't have to trust it all yeah yeah it's five and it's instant it's good i like it i'll play it i'll play it i'll show you all all right fine uh okay so my last hot take to to wrap things up uh commander cube is really good and i dare say sometimes an even better uh environment than regular commander that's my hot take i tried to i me either honestly so 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 imagine imagine well like imagine commander and imagine a cube a sealed environment uh where you draft or you don't even have to draft you can draft or you can just make take a get a randomized card pool and build a commander deck out of that it's very much along the lines of Commander Legends, and that's kind of like why I, I got into Commander Cube in the first place. You know, Commander Legends, where you have, instead of a 40-card deck, you have a 60-card deck. Instead of 40 life, you have 30 life. Uh, it's still Singleton. It's still Commander, but you have to draft it out of packs and stuff. That's basically Commander Cube. You can do it. You can build it any different way. You can have any special rules. But the idea, the concept is you're playing Commander, but... You're all sharing a card pool with which you have to build the deck out of. So there's randomization because whatever you get, you have to build. Whatever you draft, you have to build around. Uh, but the thing that I really like about it is randomization. So you 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 get different commanders each time. And also, the power level is intrinsically balanced because everybody's playing from the same card pool. There's no nobody's like bringing like some crazy deck to a random pod and there's a big mismatch and some some arch enemy thing and if you don't like sol ring you know you could have sol ring in your cube but if you don't like it you could just take it out you could you you're you have control of the cube and other people like if you play other people's cubes they have control so you can try different slices of life and everything i feel like this is like one of my favorite ways of playing commander these days i've i played um, a lot of Commander Legends when it came out, and I bought a box of a bunch of friends, and we've drafted that. We're going to be drafting that again uh, in a week from now. And I played somebody else's Commander Cube, and it was a ton of fun. And I'm building my own Commander Cube, and I, I'm just super excited with Commander Cube. I think more people should consider Commander Cube because it's, I feel like it's such a such an, a nice experience for Commander, and such a palate cleanser from like the nonsense. How many board wipes are in the cube? <laughs> as many as you want. <laughs> you want I mean, to eat? You you okay, I'm gonna ask you this: Would you all play a crim cube? I would play a crim cube <laughs> once, once. I play it once. Once. <laughs> once. Experience. <laughs> like I, just, I don't know. I, I get, to, I get pretty tired of like you know, commander. Commander is always like uh, imbalance is part of the part of the thing, and this one is just like you have intrinsically balanced. You have you're you're all pulling from the same pool and oh, i like Not it a lot. true at all though that's like saying every match you play in limited is balanced no someone drafted a really good deck and someone drafted a really bad deck right but like, it's the same extent. card pool it's a curated list so like if you're like these cards lead to widely unbalanced games you just leave them out but Wouldn't that, you end up with like, one person having the soul ring still potentially or you're saying you just, you just leave soul ring, soul ring out altogether <laughs> i do like the start. Uh, 
<laughs> I do like the, that you can have control over it. I mean, Cube is pretty awesome, and Commander is pretty awesome. Does the draft take, like, forever to draft 100 cards, or do you do it in some unique way to... Do you actually draft a full 100 single tank cards for 100. your deck? No, it's not 100 cards. It's uh, 60. Oh, okay. So it's more like... It's kind of like Commander Legends, then. Very much it, like Commander it was Legends. very much based on Commander Legends. Like, all the commanders are the partners from Commander Legends, and I think, like, some three-color ones as well. Um, and we had some conspiracy, like, special draft cards that were in, in the packs as well that were super fun. I think it was really fun. Yeah, some that decks are going to be wor- better and worse, but, like, I don't know. It's such a different way of experiencing Commander. I think it'd and be more a good escape, like, a good one yeah. off at a Magic Fest, but yeah, I think the appeal of Commander to me is just building whatever I want. That's right? true. <laughs> like, so, unless you have a full Birds archetype in there, like, I don't, <laughs> I don't know, right? <laughs> yeah. I think half the fun is is building your own deck that you can personally attach to, and yes. that's the a main draw of Commander. You see, some people just like building decks and not even playing them. Um, that's how much people are like that. But, like, I feel like if you want a different experience that more is more curated and more like everybody's expectation is kind of being curated by one person. So like it's uniform in that way. Uh, Commander Cube is like super fun. Highly recommend it. Commander Legends also. If you don't want a cube or whatever, just buy a Commander Legends box. It's so fun. I love it so much. I'm so excited for number two. Yeah. Yeah. That's all I got. That's my hot take. It's very mild. So Channel switching over to Commander Cube. <laughs> oh God! Clash I wish. podcast. <laughs> Commander Cube podcast. Commander Cube oh, so what? Podcast. What cards are you adding from the set to your new cube? Oh, that would be so lovely. Oh, oh now I get to dream about that. Okay. <laughs> um. All right. That was. We, we went from hot take to hot take to my just gushing about. I like Commander Cube. Um. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, everybody. That's it for our podcast. We got eight takes, eight of us takes. Each of us got one take in or two takes in. That's that's how math works. Two takes each, uh, eight total. We discussed it. Let us know uh, what you think about our takes. Do you agree, disagree? Tell us our wrong. Tell us our we're wrong or we're right or, you know, how XYZ is the only person who's talking sense while XYZ is also the person who makes no sense. I love to hear those comments. Um... And then like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And until next time, friends. See ya.